today the type built-in function in Python 3. So let's start with a look at the docs. Type actually has two ways to use it, using just one argument of an object, or a second way to use it using three arguments, name, bases, and dict. The docs state that when you pass just one argument, the object, it returns the type of an object and that when you pass it with three arguments, it's returning a new type object, and that this is essentially a dynamic form of the class statement. I looked for another definition as well, and I found one here that says that the type function is basically used for debugging, and then with three arguments, it can be used to dynamically initialize classes or existing classes with attributes. That makes more sense to me, and I'll show you what that looks like in this video. Now let's start with the basics. We can wrap type around any object to return the type of that object. So when we wrap it around a string, it returns string. When we wrap it around a list, it'll return list. And same thing for a dictionary or a set or an int. Right? That makes sense. One thing you can even do is take this type int and confirm that by saying equals equals int and that'll return true and you know if we were checking for a list or something of course that's going to return false dict will return false and int will return true and this will work of course for any type so we could do maybe a string and confirm that that's a string true and we could make a list and confirm that that's a list Next, I want to show you what it looks like when we assign type to something. So here we've assigned A, and when I run that, we get class string. But if we type or we wrap type around A, we get class type. So A is a type object, but it returns A here because it's assessing what the type of that value here is, and that's why it's returning string. All right, now let's use the type function with all three arguments. So I'm going to use the type function to create a new class here called car. And the second argument is a tuple with the word object. And the third argument is a dictionary. And in this dictionary, I want to have two things. I want to have a doc string and I want to have uh, some kind of attribute. So we'll add the doc string first and we'll set it equal to car class. And then we'll have another value here called speed. And we'll set that equal to 100. So here is our car. Now with this car, let's check the class. And we get a type object. Next, we can check the bases. And we see that object, that second argument that we had above. Next, we could check the dict and see some of our attributes in there. We see our car class doc string, and then we see our speed 100. And then we can actually specifically pinpoint the doc string with doc and see car class. Okay, so that's C, that's our car. Now, imagine I did this exact same thing, except instead of using the three arguments from the type function, we just wrote it out. So here we had car2, and what were the attributes? We had a doc string that said car class, and we had a speed equals 100 attribute. Okay, so here we have car2, and once again, we can check the class here, and it's a type object. We can check the bases, and it's the same object as before. We can check the dict and see we have the same thing. We have our speed is 100. We have our car class doc string. Though the format does look slightly different in that here it starts with module main. Uh, and here that's kind of after the, the doc and the speed. But okay, same thing. And then last one is doc. So car class once again. So we did the exact same thing, um, except 
here we actually had to write out a new class and in our first option we used the type function to basically instantiate that. Now let's remember that definition we looked at in the beginning where type, when used with three arguments, can be used to dynamically initialize classes. Well, that's exactly what we've done here, where we use the type function instead of writing it all out ourselves. So that's the beauty of using the type function.